Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how we can use Web API with ADO.NET to fetch records from our database and uh, show it on the API. Okay, so uh, to begin with, we will select ASP.NET Core Web API, this one, and we will go ahead with next, name the application. So let's say Right, so next dot net six, uh, not using for HTTPS. Uh, I'll keep it simple, okay? Open API support, uh, minimal. No, we will just uh, use the normal API. If we uncheck that, that's going to take me for uh. Minimal APIs. Well, minimal APIs uh, is something which we would do in future, but as of now, we will just proceed with the general APIs or the normal APIs. Okay. So as the project opens up, so let's check uh, the default weather forecast dot CS is already there. Let's fix up with our app settings. Let's uh, add the connection string over here. Now you can see the connection string is added here. So that is referring to my database in SQL Server, which is uh, this one. Student assignment is the database and select staff from students is the table. So these are the records that we are trying to fetch through our API. Uh, okay, let's add our controller. Make this student controller. Guys, you can fast forward this video if you want to, because I know I'm a little bit slow. So if you want, you can just fast forward the video uh, to the number of times you want. OK, so now we have to add references for the uh, connection string and uh, fetch our data from there. Let's first of all check our program.cs if it has everything. No, it does not. So mm -hmm. I have to make some changes here. OK, give me a few seconds. OK, so after installing the a couple of nuggets. Uh, let's try to do a run and see if things are running fine. If I'm trying to fetch the weather records, yes, it's working. OK. So weather records is working. As of now, I think everything is good. OK, guys, so I think I made one mistake because this was supposed to be an API controller, but this one is not. So. We will have to remove this and I will add another API controller. All right, so you need to select this API controller, okay, guys? So this is the API controller, add it.
yeah now this one looks good okay there's one thing to mention here we need the model classes because we need to refer to the table columns in that case uh, without a model we would be having a problem so i'll have to add the models in that case i'll have to add the folder named as models i have to add the tables over here let me add the models and then i'll show you up so the model that we created for student now we are going to use that the constructor we have to use the configuration string here configuration equals to the configuration that we uh, passed in the parameter Okay, guys, so uh, you can look up this that uh, we have created two objects for the connection string and for the command. And uh, here we are passing the model class, the model class that we created here. Uh, so uh, yeah, we are creating a list of type uh, the model class, and then we are uh, refreshing the connection using a data table DT. Uh, wait, I'm sorry, data table DT won't be used here. In the commands uh, command oh i'm sorry yeah data table is used for uh binding the sql adapter <sighs> after finding binding it with the adapter then we will have to use a for each loop in order to uh in order to populate our model class and then we are passing the model value with a json string so certain things happen with the json because there is uh there is no newton soft uh, in our nuggets and also we haven't mentioned that in the program.cs that's why okay so let me just fix that one i'll get back to you yeah add controllers with views dot add newton soft i'm sorry okay so uh, we added this one the builder dot services dot add controller with views uh, dot add newton soft options and in options we provided that serializer settings dot contract resolver uh, this one is required to uh, like we sometimes get an error uh, of serialization deserialization that's why we uh, put this one in here and um, hope everything should be fine with her okay still let me see okay i think i haven't used the Okay, guys, so uh, I find out the uh, issue. So what happened is this thing, uh, JSON is not working because it's inheriting from controller base. It's actually from controller class. Instead of, uh, instead of controller base class, you have to use controller class. Okay. That's why now you can see if everything is good, okay? Don't need all of these. Right, so now you can see that everything is fixed. Uh, we made some changes in the program.cs. Let's have a look at that. We added this one, builder at services dot add Newton soft. Uh, nothing more here. In the NuGet package, uh, we install uh, we installed uh, these few things. Code generation is probably not required. Uh, you may not use this one. I used. That's if you want to really uh, uh, what you say scaffold some uh, codes, then you might i mean you have to generate some codes like we right click and add a view or something in that case we would use this one but probably it's not used because here we are not using any kind of views uh remaining newton soft is required at some point entity framework core is also not required here i might uninstall them okay so these are the few things that uh, you can have a look at this uh these are the you get that we installed and uh, return JSON is working now. Uh, so as of this, everything is everything should be fine and you should be able to get uh, records from our database in this index. Okay, uh, model class is already here. You get you already saw program.cs has this much of. Uh, I forgot to raise the 
fonts. Okay, I'm sorry. So now you can see the text inside the program.cs. If we go to our students controller, then this is where, uh, what I have here. In the app settings, you can see that the connection string is mentioned at the bottom. And in the model class, we have the column names. Uh, student name uh, it's required when i mean i put it there because we would be using this one to create a record in future so uh, this is here so that's all in this program if we run this we try with api students execute and here is the data, okay? So it's able to fetch the data. If you want to use the same thing in Postman, also you can use this one in the Postman. Without Swagger. Ah, sorry. it's able to fetch the records here postman took a while and it came up so we are going to put that in the get So you got your names from the database. We don't need to put anything in the body because this is just a guest request and we are not passing any parameters to them. So once we try to create a record, in that case, we will have to add elements in the body, uh, the body text. As of now, we don't need that. OK, so guys, a uh, key point to remember while you are creating an API is uh, you have to inherit the controller class instead of the controller base. And uh, that's going to give you the access to return only a JSON data with the returning data table. OK, so that's it for video, this video. And um, stay tuned and uh, keep watching. Until then, happy coding. Thank you.